that is a lot of money. Like, for us regular people, man, even if we got a million dollars guaranteed, we'd be like, whoa, but for this deal, like, let's read the details of this deal that Chris Jones just got from the Chiefs. Okay, Chiefs and five-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Chris Jones reached an agreement on a record five-year deal that includes $95 million guaranteed. 90, like, what are you even going to do with all that? He could probably buy the Chiefs if he wanted to. But anyway, it includes $95 million guaranteed and allows KC to keep his best defender before free agency begins. The deal is expected to be the highest average salary ever given to an NFL defensive tackle. Adam Schefter said the specific details still are being finalized, but Chris Jones will sign a five-year deal in which all the money in the first three years, $95 million, $95 million is guaranteed. When the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, Jones' deal will include the highest ever average annual defensive tackle salary. And whew, I am um, so glad that the Ravens, they got that deal done with Justin Matabike. Now, not saying that uh, Justin Matabike's deal would have even touched this, but had Chris Jones signed before Justin Matabike, Justin Matabike, EDC and the Ravens, they could have offered Justin Matabike what they offered him. And if Chris Jones would have signed before then, just matter being able to be like, look, even if you don't give me as much as that, we need to be a lot closer to that than we are right now. That could have made things a whole lot harder and a whole lot tougher. But this deal, looking at this deal, happy for Chris Jones. Shout out to Chris Jones and shout out to the Chiefs for getting it done. But this makes things, oh, it just makes things that much better for the Baltimore Ravens. And really the timing of everything. Uh, the, the, the timing of them finalizing this thing. They, they, they used the franchise tag on Justin Matabike, uh, and then a couple days after the franchise tag, boom, they, they got everything done. So that is a beautiful thing. Back to Chris Jones real quick. He says, Chris Jones had months of negotiations with the Chiefs to the point where he held out all of training camp last year and missed the first game of the regular season against the Lions. Oh, yeah, which they lost, too. He says he came back on a revised one-year deal, totaled 10 and a half sacks on the season, was named first-team All-Pro, won his third Super Bowl, and now becomes the highest-paid defensive tackle in NFL history. What a life. <laughs> what a life. What a life, man. He bet on himself and he won. Always happy for players, though, when, when they bet on themselves and they get the job done. And he obviously got the job done. Now, speaking of getting the job done, we got a job to do. We got a job to do with questions from subs. And we got to get all of our questions from subs updated so we can go into the new league year in a tampering period with a clean slate. So this is a special episode of questions from subscribers. So if you have sent in an, a, a question from subscribers over the past couple of weeks and you haven't heard it yet, well... Hey, my friends, today is your day. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on, and leave a like on the video because it helps out a lot. I love y'all so much, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all. Let's have a fun new NFL league year. It's going to be a great one. Now, first question. Speaking of Chris Jones, speaking about Justin Matter, BK came from my guy, BB. He said, bro, I got a question. Please let me know if I'm missing something. Ravens tagged Matter, BK, and two or three days later came to an agreement on a deal. Why would Ravens waste a tag on Justin Matter, BK when they could have paid him and used a franchise tag on Patrick Queen? Could they have done that? And if so, what was EDC thinking? Uh, it would have been a better move tagging PQ and having him for the upcoming season. Does this even make sense? Your thoughts? Also, do you think Ravens should sign veteran O-line players instead of gambling on rookie linemen? Ravens seem to lean too hard on rookies to fill veteran positions. Thanks for your channel and much love to you and your family from the 502. Appreciate that, BB. And he said, hashtag protect Lamar. Now, that's a, a good question. So let, let's go piece by piece. So he said, um, Ravens tag Matt BK, and two or three days later, they came to an agreement on a deal. Why would they waste a tag on Justin when they could have paid him and use a franchise tag on PQ? Well, um, I, I never thought, and uh, most people probably never thought that they were going to use a, the franchise tag on Patrick Queen. I think we have all came to the conclusion that Patrick Queen is out of there. Patrick Queen is gone. He is going to go get his money and go get more money elsewhere. Now with Justin Matabike, the fact that they didn't have a deal in place, the franchise tag, putting a franchise tag on him, it saves the Baltimore Ravens in a big way because they could have been like, all right, well, we didn't come to an agreement with Justin Matabike before the new league year starts. We're not going to put the franchise tag on him. Had they continued to not have a deal in place, he becomes a free agent, and that's it. Like, he, he could be gone. He don't get franchise tag. He could be on his merry way somewhere else and get more money from another team. So with the Ravens putting a franchise tag on him, that eliminates that risk completely. 
yeah, the, the, the new league year isn't official yet, but had they not placed a franchise tag on him once that new league year hit, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he would have been out of there. Uh, he said, could they have done that? And if so, what was EDC thinking? So he answered that it would have been better move tagging PQ and having him for the upcoming season. Does this even make sense? Now, I would have loved for PQ to stay with the Baltimore Ravens. But, again, they, they're they not going to pay big money to two inside linebackers. It's just I, I don't see it. They never have, and I don't anticipate them doing that anytime soon. And he also said, uh, do you think Ravens should sign veteran O-line players instead of gambling on rookie offensive linemen? Ravens seem to lean too hard on rookies to fill veteran positions. I don't depends on what position, but um, but yeah, I I, I do think uh, just a mix of um, you because you you could go about it a couple different ways. You got your center in position already. Um, as far as left and right tackle, we'll see what happens with that. But in my opinion, they need to get a plan in place with Ronnie Stanley. They need to get bring in somebody who is going to be Ronnie Stanley's replacement. And in my opinion, they need to do that ASAP. The reason I say they need to do that ASAP is because you continue every single year to know what life is like without Ronnie Stanley because he misses a lot of time. You having a starting offensive lineman, you're starting left tackle, your blindside protector, he's on a rotation. So he don't even play full time. That right there lets you know like, oh, okay, it, it, it's, it's about that time, baby. It's about that time for us to start looking in another direction. So I, I think it should be a mix of both both veterans and um, rookies or young guys to help feel, uh, take care of that position of, of the offensive line because it's such a critical position. Like you said at the end of your question, you said hashtag protect Lamar, and we certainly want Lamar to be protected. Uh, but if his starters are going out, every other game, every other play, then that decreases the quality of the offensive line, decreases the quality of the offense, and decreases the quality of the Ravens. And we don't want the Ravens' quality decreased at And all. some other questions still that came from BB. He said, I'm not sure if this is a long shot. Bringing in a proven wide receiver to pair with Zay and Bateman would be in the best interest for the Baltimore Ravens. Thinking about the chemistry Lamar and Hollywood have had in the past, Ravens need to solidify the position with Munkin as a play caller and his ability to be creative with the passing game. Hollywood would be the perfect thought. Uh, the perfect fit, your thoughts. That's <laughs> my fault. Hey, me? I would love it. But I, I think that ship is sailed. Things are much different now. It's a new offense. Uh, they passing the ball a lot more. Hollywood will be able to continue to be involved in so many different ways. Him and Lamar obviously got that crazy connection. But I just think that that ship has sailed. Uh, he also said Ravens should go after a veteran left tackle in free agency. Drafting a left tackle in the late second or third would be a better option. Expecting a rookie left tackle to protect Lamar is too much of a gamble, especially when there are players like Tyron Smith from Dallas, uh, Makai Becton from the Jets, ooh, and Trent Brown from, the, from New England. Signing one or even two of these offensive linemen with free up space for the Ravens in a draft to go after wide receivers and DBs. Also, keeping Pat Ricard is imperative due to the fact of his all-around ability and importance to this team. He is one of Lamar's go-to guys in tight situations, and letting him go in free agency would just be taken away from the team as a whole. Thanks for the channel and congratulations on a new flock, baby girl. Appreciate that, BB. Um, with Pat Ricard, um, again, we, we answered that question earlier about the offensive lineman. But with Pat Ricard, he is an interesting one because, yeah, he is missed to do it all. He is very important to the Baltimore Ravens and what they do on offense. Um, I could see, I still think that they could end up cutting him one day and signing him back like a day or two later. Um, I, I think that could happen like. A little further down into free agency uh, but I do think one way or another that Pat Ricard is going to continue to be uh, on this football team and real quick we got to take a quick break to give a special shout out to all the team keep it clean patrons the newest team keep it clean patron or returning team keep it clean patron is Marquita now I remember when we first started Patreon I want to say it was 2021 I believe but when we first started she was literally one of the first people the first people that signed up to support. So, Marquita, I appreciate you. Thank you very, very, very much. Special shout out to really all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And like I always say, if you don't want to, do not feel bad. I know y'all don't. I don't want to become no Team Keep It Clean patron for what? And that's okay. I, I ain't mad at you at all. But for all those that want to become one or all one, I love y'all and I appreciate y'all. Special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members, all them, the people you see in the comment section with that nice pretty star next to their name. Special shout out to all of y'all as well and just everybody, man. 
the way that y'all support the channel, I, I appreciate it. It means a whole lot to me, and it means a whole lot to a lot of other people as well, too, because when people see your support, it just shows how special y'all are and how great uh, of people that y'all are. So I appreciate y'all big time. Speaking of the Team Keep It Clean patrons, let's get to some questions from our lovely Team Keep It Clean patrons. First one came from my guy, Derek. He said, he noticed. And Graven, good evening to you, my brother, and congratulations on the baby girl. I know Carter will make a great big brother and above and beyond all else. Hope you and your wife are great parents to the new baby girl of y'all's. Hey, appreciate that. Thank you. He said, P.S., I hope Pookie don't get jealous, LOL. We all know how young dogs can be once the attention is off of them. LOL. Anywho, yeah, hey, we actually got two dogs. Uh, we had the second one for about a year now okay so we got a golden retriever and a pomeranian um and they they're great man they're great they got a lot of personality as i'm sure all of y'all know um but shout out to both of them is pookie and peach but anyway continuing he said um uh da -da 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 -da. he said he noticed remember the picture i tagged lamar jackson and justin jefferson in uh the pic with justin jefferson in a ravens uniform that picture just felt so right and natural to see him in a ravens uniform uh, it really did anywho what do you think ran through lamar jackson's mind because lamar jackson definitely saw it do you think it sparked something in his head and do you think he may go to edc to spark something in his mind and it's a possibility but more than not uh but edc is known to throw smoke screens meaning uh, us and the rest of Ravens Flock and NFL fan base think he's doing one thing when we're really after something nobody expects us to be in. In 2019, it was Jalen Ramsey in addition to Jamal Adams that year. In 2020, it was DeAndre Hopkins. Didn't go through, none of them. Then Yannick Ngakwe. In 2021, it was Xavier and Howard. In 2022, it was Roquan Smith. And most definitely during the 2023 season, it was Derrick Henry. So am I saying EDC is going to attempt to get Justin Jefferson? Probably not, but you never know. And engraving, like you always say, anything is possible until it's not. LOL. Another example, we got the Rock and Roman Reigns versus Seth and Cody at WrestleMania. LOL. See where I'm going with this? Off topic, but still, no one's seen this as a possibility either. LOL. Anywho, thank you, my brother. Have a blessed day and blessings to you all. I appreciate it. Justin Jefferson to the Baltimore Ravens would be nasty. <laughs> that would be downright filthy. And we would all love it. You know, most likely it ain't gonna happen, but not even so much about what you said about justin jefferson because i that's like a 99.99999 percent chance that it does not happen but again anything possible so it ain't possible no more but we ain't counting on that one but what you talked about with the smoke screens that's real right there we have continued to see so many reports about derrick henry to the baltimore ravens i think the betting odds is him signing with the baltimore ravens uh we've seen reports about saquon barkley him coming to the Ravens and I just I don't know man it feels like yeah both of those would be nice options but it just seems like it's being talked about too much and that EDC is gonna hit us with a swerve next question came from a patron my guy Gareth he said hey Graven it's Gareth sorry I haven't asked a question in a while he ain't gotta apologize for that man he said I'm just getting over the end of the season Ooh, we we all are <laughs> trust me he said what three players do you want the Ravens to sign this offseason or in free agency and congratulations to you and your family with a little one I'm just happy for you I'm so happy for you uh and he said I, I must send you something for the newest member of the team keep it clean oh man it's, it's all good I, I appreciate you man um three players that I would like to see the Baltimore Ravens sign this uh offseason I mean this in a couple days well Actually, the, 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 the talks start tomorrow, but um, uh, three players, uh, Jadavian Clowney, uh, one of them got signed, that being Justin Matabike. Um, hmm. And I'd probably say Ronald Darby. Um, reason I say Jadavian Clowney for obvious reasons, y'all know that's my guy, Justin Matabike for obvious reasons because he went off, uh, and that alleviates a lot of cap space too. But um, for Ronald Darby, um, I think he would be a good signing for the Ravens because he would have a longer time. He would have a full offseason with the Baltimore Ravens. He could be healthy for a full offseason with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so he could be even more familiar, even more comfortable with the Baltimore Ravens. And this would allow them that much more flexibility in the draft for the Baltimore Ravens. So those would be my three picks. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Beard. He said, what's up, bro? I hope the family is doing well. Hey, I appreciate you. He said, what you think about Kadarius Toney? Uh, he's probably a younger version of Nelly with the drop problem. <laughs> He said he's probably a younger version of Nelson Aguilar with a drop problem, but he is very gifted and cheap. And also with us, he might be rejuvenated to get back at the Chiefs. Well, I mean, what's he going to be rejuvenated to get back at them for? He, he got, what, two Super Bowls with them, right? Yeah, he got two of them. 
Two Super Bowls. Two time Super Bowl champion, right? Yeah. Cause he got with the Chiefs the year before last. And he was obviously with them last year. Cause of the whole offsides on offense thing. But yeah, man. So look like he 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 got absolutely no motivation at all to get back at the Chiefs. He he's a Super Bowl champion because of the Chiefs. Like he ain't gonna be mad at them. He said I was somebody else. He'd be oh I'm chilling. Oh, we going against the Chiefs? Okay, cool. Whatever. He ain't got no beef with them. So th- that doesn't give him any extra motivation because they, they made him a champion. And no matter how you look at his career, no matter what happens, no matter the offsides, no matter whatever, whatever beef he got with the Giants, no matter what happened, you can never, ever take away his Super Bowl championships. Next question came from my guy, Mike. He said, what's going on in Graven? I recently ran into this post about Lamar restructuring his contract to keep key players. If he does, do you think the Ravens will find a way to keep Patrick Queen, Geno Stone, and Matabike? Pretty sure I spelled that wrong. You only mess it up by two letters, so not a big deal. Well, yeah, not a big deal. We want to we wanna work on getting it right. With Matabike, his name was tough, man. It took me a while to, to keep getting it right. But that was over typing it and writing it over and over and over. And now my phone, if I put Matt, M-A-D-U, then my phone will auto-type the rest of Matabike because it knows exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, he said, um, well, for, with that first question, no. I, I, they, they not keeping all of those guys. It'd be nice. It'd be very, very nice, but... It ain't happening. Patrick Queen, he could get more opportunity elsewhere. And he, I mean, he get a lot of opportunity with the Ravens, but to be the guy at inside linebacker, this is his chance. Um, to not just be, oh, I'm playing alongside Roquan Smith. No, for him to be the guy, this is an opportunity for him. Same thing with Geno Stone. Same exact thing with Geno Stone. So I'm sure those guys are going to get more money and more opportunity elsewhere. Uh, he said, also, I feel like we should make a bold move and release Ronnie Stanley. Since being paid in 2020, he has been injured every year like clockwork. I feel he is not worth the money at this point and needs to go. What are your thoughts? Well, Ronnie Stanley, same thing we talked about earlier. Um, the money part is tricky. When he got his deal, it was not a bad deal. Just the timing of the injury that got this bad. T.J. Watt ended up accidentally like snapping Ronnie Stanley's ankle. And everything just really went downhill from there. He has never really been the same from that point on it's always been like sort of a nagging thing he tried to rehab it at one year then tried to then, then it was like oh no i don't want to get surgery then he ended up missing the rest of the year that year and then it just it just been just downhill from there so ronnie stanley man um whatever they do they need to have a contingency plan in place like now varsity blues next question came from my guy michael he said good morning my man i hope all is well with you and the family many blessings i love the channel Appreciate that, Mike. He said, I watch it vigorously as I work, but I do have a question. In the movie Varsity Blues, the players took a stand and did it their way to win. Would you respect Harbaugh if he understood that last year was all on him and he needed to step back and put fresh faces out there for us to win again? Peace, love, and happiness, my friend. Hmm. So so the the, the Ravens players, they, they take a stand against Jonathan Harbaugh? Um, I mean, they did that in, 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 what, 2012, and it worked. They got the Super Bowl, so, I mean, y'all, y'all want to run it back? Because, again, with Ravens, it's been an every 12 years type of thing with the Super Bowl. So, I know we were all upset last year when they didn't get it, but I guess maybe it just wasn't that time. It wasn't the 12th year, because, remember, they got it in the season 2000, the year 2001. They got it last time in the, uh, the time before that, or the time after that, they got it in the season 2012, the year 2013. So that's 12 years later. And now this year they could get it in the season 2024, but the year 2025. Um, but yeah, hey, really I'm, I'm with whatever works. I, I can't say it's all on Harbaugh because players still got to play, but it, it does certainly start from the top. You as the head coach, you make a lot of those crucial decisions um, as far as personnel, as far as play calling, as far as all of that. And you got to override stuff. Uh, you got to tell them, hey, yeah, that's good. You got to tell them, hey, no, 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 that's not good um, because you're the leader. You're the leader. Even though you got professionals and you let those guys do their job and whatnot, you oversee all of that. So it's very important that you oversee it to the best of your ability and you make your players able to execute a lot better and just make things easier for them. Make things easier for them. Because with the Baltimore Ravens, with that AFC Championship game, it was crazy because despite the play calling, despite the execution, despite everything, they were in it to the very end. They, they, they really were. But, well, you know the rest of the story. Next question came from my guy, Robert. Ooh, this is a good one. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just out of curiosity, what do you think is the reason why the Baltimore Ravens cannot find a way to get production from both Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely together, especially with a coordinator who just, <laughs> who just ran a two tight end system? He said, hashtag only the Ravens, LOL. That's such a good question. I, I, I wish I knew the answer because that is such a great question. It's a tough one. 
I don't know, man. Cause it's like when one's out there, hey, that one will go off. Then when the other one's out there by himself, hey, that other one will go off. But when they both there together, it's like, you, you stop. What, what what do we? So I, I I couldn't tell. I wish I knew the answer. I I really do not know. I have zero clue. And this has been a thing forever. Well, well I mean, they like they only been on the team for two years, so they only been this only been having it for two years. But still, like with Greg Roman. He couldn't do it. They get a new offensive coordinator, Todd Monken. He couldn't do it, so I don't know what it is. Maybe this is the answer. The answer is volume. This is another question. The next question came from my guy, Jalen. He said, what's good, Engraven? I'm finally able to talk about football with get it without getting upset now. But my question is, do you think the answer to improving the passing game is just throwing the ball more? This may be a little long, but stick with me here. In another video, you mentioned how Likely and Andrews never seem to go off at the same time. Could that be because we were still second to last in pass attempts this year, and our offense isn't designed for the multiple receivers to have big yardage games at once? That's a good point, but let's, let's just finish and we get into it. He said, we have guys who have speed and can separate, and our tight ends are strong and good with 50-50 balls. I, I get wanting to establish the run, and it's important to be a balanced team, but what's the point of really investing in pass catches, whether drafting or signing in the offseason, if the targets will be this slow? If you're going to abandon the run and air it out in the playoffs, you might as well get the guys used to doing that during the season. Mm, okay. You you got me there because um, I was going to go in a different direction, and you, you steered me a different way. Anyway, he said... Uh, not saying we have to lead the league in attempts, but is it too much to ask to be 15th instead of 31st? Uh, thanks for your time and all that you do. Uh, and he said, P.S., you should have seen me when Lamar caught his own tip pass and took off. Felt like we were destined to win after that. Man, we got so many moments this throughout last season where I felt like it was just, yeah, Ravens were going to be the Super Bowl champions. Just the way that it says. The, and I think the biggest moment for me where I was like, oh, yeah, we got it. This, this, this is the year for sure was the Rams game. Because that Rams game, so many other times, so many other years, Ravens would have lost that. But they found a way to get it done with so many opposition, so so much stuff stacked against them, so many mistakes, so many issues, but they got it done. And I was, oh, yeah, this, but, yeah, well, you know. Anyway, back to the question. Um, volume, we should pass it more. Uh, that's that's tricky you and you talked about it as far as being a balanced team but what's the point of really investing in pass catches whether drafting or signing someone in the offseason if the target's going to be this low i think everything really depends on um the style of the team the play uh because ravens they they are a run heavy team they, they do run the ball and i do i do like how they spent their money last offseason and how they did invest in pass catching options because they had quality guys uh who could be there and be ready for when they did pass the ball a little bit more because they were passing the ball more this year than they had times before um well at least it felt like it when you see they were second to last and pass attempts but um I, I think with, the, yeah, volume, I get it. Volume, because when you have more volume, especially during a regular season, when it gets to postseason and you're passing more, guys are like, oh, okay, yeah, we're used to this, man. This is what we do. But Ravens, like, their team is not a pass-heavy team. They can be, but they're not. So they're, they're, that's just not how they built. That's not how they play. Uh, they're a run-heavy team. And, like, it's like they're a run-heavy team that can pass if they need to. Um, but they Ravens have always, for their entirety, been based off of the run. For the majority, of, they've been based off of the run. They've been some years. I know the Mark Tressman year, they wasn't running the ball good that year. But anyway, most years they run, 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 run. Um, and it's good. But then it's like what the weird part about that is they so based off of the run. But then when it comes crunch time, especially against Andy Reid, they decide, you know what? No, we're not gonna run anymore. So I, I don't even think that. I get what you're saying with the volume. I, I get that completely because I, I said that a couple years ago myself too. So I, I, I agree with it. But with the Baltimore Ravens, they just uh, – it's not even about volume to me now. I, I think it's just about stop getting away from who you are. Stop getting away from what got you so much success because that's exactly what they did against the Chiefs. Hollywood Brown, anyone? Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, hey, great. Hope you're having a good day. As I write this on the school bus a few days before free agency, I got to thinking, how would you feel about Hollywood Brown coming back to Baltimore as a two or three? I know you love him. I personally wouldn't be opposed. Just want to thank you for remembering what I said uh, about my goals and being happy for me. It means a lot. And that's all for now. I'm out. No, no, no. I appreciate you. I appreciate you sharing that, man. Because to, to, you said you had got uh, over 100 pounds down. Again, that like for somebody to do that, that takes a lot of self-discipline. That takes a lot of motivation. That takes a lot of um, 
this discipline for sure. Discipline probably the best word I could use because it's easy. To, well, not necessarily easy, but you could lose a couple pounds. I'm like, oh yeah, I lost a couple pounds. You can gain it right back. Boom. It's so easy. I mean, I, I be doing that all the time. I lose a couple pounds. Then I then I see that I, I see a uh, cookies and cream shake. I see fried Oreo, something like that. And it's like ooh. But and then I can gain gain the weight back, gain the weight back right away. But to and that's only like three three pounds, three two three pounds, four pounds, something like that. But to lose over hundred pounds, that's that's significant right there. So shout out to you, yeah. And yeah, you already know for me, I, I would love if Hollywood came back. I, I I just don't think it's gonna happen. I, I think um, I think there the relationship between him and the Ravens is fine. I, I don't think there's any bad blood. Um, but I because again, his thing wasn't with the players; it was with the plays. It was with the coordinator, the previous coordinator. Um, I think he will like Todd Monken a lot more than he like Greg Roman, but um, I just think that ship is, is sailed, and it's one of those things where it's it's just done. Double trouble. Next question came from my guy Mark J G. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the team keep it clean are doing well. Congrats on your addition to the family, and props and blessings to y'all. I hey, appreciate that." Speaking of additions, this brings me to my point. Why is it difficult for Baltimore to use Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely effectively together? See, I, I love when team keep it clean be on the same page. A lot of so, so much time we all be on the same page thinking the same thing. Anyway, continuing, he said, "I lean toward it being a John Harbaugh decision, and here's why: with Ed Dixon and Dennis Pitta, Dennis Pitta came to be the more go-to target, and Ed Dixon was tight end too. It got the job done, but it wasn't eye popping. Fast forward, you have Hayden and Mark, and Mark just took off while Boyle and Hurst were secondary options. It was mad, but Lamar won an MVP off of it. Now we are here with two dynamic weapons, and Mark and Isaiah, and you've got to use these six four bodies. How is it that Todd Munkin had Donnell Washington and Brock Bra Brock Bowers at tight end at Georgia and won two titles? And he openly said they were his best receiving options, and you come to the NFL with that same setup and not use it. Mark can play play tight end let Isaiah play tight end slash wide receiver or a big slot while Charlie Kolar can essentially be tight end too you won't need another wide receiver if you do this keep adding weapons please I say Harbaugh is the reason because some things mysteriously tend to vanish with him now that part right there that part right there is similar to what we were just talking about before how the Ravens just they, they, they get away from themselves and he's some things just tend to mysteriously vanish with him that's a interesting way of putting it but anyway continuing he said also off subject uh could, okay well First with that part, um, a lot of people have said that throughout, even from last year, well, from two years ago now, because last year is done now, or uh, well, last season is done now, but a lot of people had talked about um, Isaiah Likely being sort of a wide receiver, and he used to play wide receiver too, um, but I don't know. I don't know if that would even do it. I don't know, because they'll have him lined up in the slot. They'll have him lined up in different places and whatnot, but um, they'll have do the same thing with Mark Andrews, but I, I just, I don't know what it is. I, I really don't know, and... Can I blame it on Harbaugh? Not really, because I, I just don't know. Like, how how would Harbaugh, like, erase the two? Like, how would he, like, how would he make it to where they just, it just ain't working with both of them on the field at the same time? I, I don't know. I'm just, that's just something that I'm just extremely lost about. Um, so, yeah, man. Anyway, uh, he also said, uh, is there, now this was before Matabike was signed. He said, uh, could there be a possible scenario where we extend Matt BK before the deadline and tag Patrick Queen? Now, that's what my guy was talking about earlier, BB, from the beginning of this video. Uh, he said, I asked because if you can tag and trade, you get lots of value than just letting him walk. Now, with Patrick Queen, if they were to do a tag and trade with Patrick Queen, who's to say that they could actually get a trade for him? Because teams may look at that and be like, uh, you know what? No, we ain't going to try to pay that number for Patrick Queen. Let the Ravens keep him. Let that be their problem. And if you anticipate trading Patrick Queen you got to have somebody that's ready to do a deal like right away. Um, and then they, even at that, the team could be like, you know what? No, nah, we don't want to do it anymore. They could back off. You want to try to have something official done. But um, so with that being said, I don't think Ravens could even take that risk uh, to tag a Patrick Queen because if they don't get any buyers and you still got the tag on Patrick Queen, then it's like, oof, okay, well, you. I don't want to say you would be stuck with him because it's not a bad thing to have a Patrick Queen on your team at all. But, um, yeah, that would be – Yikes. Uh, so he said, I ask because if you can tag and trade, you get lots of value than just letting him walk. That That's true. And he said, if you get the chance with the draft coming up and you do a little homework in your busy schedule, check out these players. Okay. Cooper De DeJean, cornerback, or maybe it's DeJean, cornerback from Iowa. Keon Coleman, wide receiver from FSU. Oh, I've been hearing so much about him. I've been hearing a lot about him. So we, we definitely going to look at him soon. He said, Christian Haynes, uh, offensive guard from UConn. Hope this all made sense. Hopefully it wasn't too terribly long for you. Peace, love, and blessings. Nah, you, you good, Mark. Appreciate you, man. 
And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Rodell. He said, is it possible? My guy, here we go again. A disappointing ending to the movie, but with that, I don't feel it was a bad movie. What I mean is, I personally can't say this season was a failure. I, I can. I, it, it was. Like, the, the Ravens had a lot of growth. They, they moved forward, and they got farther than they have gotten uh, in the Lamar Jackson era. They made it to the AFC Championship, so the season... Oh, it wasn't all a failure, but it was a failure. The way this team was assembled, the roster that they had, the record that they had, the the records that they broke, thirteen and four, number one seed. You don't get, you ain't get to the Super Bowl. That's a failure to me. But ever, not everything was a failure. But the end goal, they failed. So anyway, he said. Um, I say that because going into the season, I judge us off of just making the AFC Championship. I didn't care if we went 17-0 and or 10-7. and We had to make this game. We haven't got past the division round since Lamar been here. We absolutely had a terrific regular season, but I couldn't let that change my outlook. Should we have been in a big dance? Absolutely. But we also reached another level that Lamar hasn't reached before, which brings me to my next point. You're right. Let's continue, though. He said, is it even possible? Is it possible to beat the Chiefs? <laughs> hey, hey well, regular season, yeah. Postseason, hey. It is possible. It's gonna take a lot, though, man. You better hope. Oh, I, ain't, you know, I ain't gonna say nothing about Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, man. But um, you just better hope a lot of things are on your side. Uh, and you gotta bring your A game and just you gotta bring your what's what's above an A, A plus, A plus plus plus. You gotta bring that, cause well, anyway, let's continue. He said, "Is it even possible? Is it possible to beat the Chiefs? Is the NFL pushing this next Tom Brady thing and backing the Chiefs?" And he put in parentheses, "Refs." Is Patrick Mahomes just light years better than everyone else? Was the Bengals beating them and advancing just an anomaly? Like obviously, this was the absolute worst offensive team we've seen Pat and Andy have, and they beat arguably the best offensive team in Miami, beat the hottest team on the road in Buffalo, and then beat the best team in the NFL on the road. Lamar is now one and four against Mahomes. And not only was this Lamar's best offense, it was his best defense. Everyone argued that Mahomes wouldn't come close when Cheetah left, and now he's won it again. No Tyreek, no problem. No enemy, no problem. We cried for Lamar Jackson to get more weapons, and with the most weapons he's ever had, the story has the same ending again. I ask, is this possible? <sighs> what a sad way to end this episode. It is possible, though. <laughs> it is, but... It's just going to take a lot. Ravens got to beat themselves, man. They got to beat themselves. They, they weren't themselves that game. They, they tend to, in the biggest moments, they tend to get away from who they really are. That's an issue. Anyway, continuing, he said, my other question, did the media win versus Lamar? I'm never going to stop believing that what makes Lamar Jackson Lamar Jackson is his legs and athleticism. We've seen hundreds of guys play quarterback and throw the football, but we haven't seen a ton run like Lamar. Heck, Vic was the greatest running quarterback to me before Lamar Jackson. That's true. Uh, there's no comparing them now, but my point is I truly believe the media won and literally got in Lamar's head with the whole running back can he throw, et cetera, narratives. Now, I do believe in growth, and Lamar's accuracy was in doubt coming into the league. He's obviously worked on that part, and it's great to see. Next part of his development has to be the deep ball, but, man, he can't forget what makes him so special. There were countless moments during the season where he has the lanes to do what he does best, but settled. That, I agree. I think we all agree with that. There are a lot of times, like, Lamar, take off, but he, no, he didn't. Anyway, he said sometimes it works, but at the same time, we did say throughout this whole season, we continue to say from jump that we could tell he was holding back. And I think he was holding back just to keep himself healthy for the long run, just to make sure he was there, just to make sure the Baltimore Ravens had the best chance of getting to the Super Bowl that they possibly did. And he was there, so he gave him that. But anyway, continuing. He said, sometimes it works, sometimes it's a sack or loss of yardage, but I personally feel like we are building this team off of Lamar Jackson, the athlete, not Lamar Jackson, the quarterback. Ooh, you talking. Especially when you talk about the offensive line. But anyway, he said, what I mean is when Lamar Jackson is being Lamar Jackson, he don't need a top five to ten offensive line because he's dancing and making plays with his legs. That's Lamar Jackson, the athlete. Lamar Jackson, the quarterback, will require more money invested into the offensive line. Lamar Jackson, the athlete, just needs playmakers surrounding him, and he will make it happen. That's the responsibility of the most important player on the field. You are Superman. Make a way out of no way. Obviously, with age, his running will slow down, and he will require more from his arm and mind, but this man is just entering his prime. You got to play your style of football. Play backyard football. Forget stats, media, naysayers, and be the person you've always been. We are so much more dangerous when he does just that. And that's true. That's a great point. And that just brings me back to what we've been saying a lot throughout this episode. When the Baltimore Ravens get away from who they are, it it just it it messes a lot of stuff up. And they are not the best team that they could possibly be. When Lamar Jackson gets away from who he is, because again, we know Lamar Jackson can do everything. We know he can do everything. Passing wise, running wise, he can do it all. But 
it does it can seem sometimes like he is playing prove it ball like oh i'm gonna prove to these people this i'm gonna prove to these people that but you ain't gotta prove to them nothing just win <laughs>